What up, peeps? This is Get With It Sports, place where you get your sports with a lot of swag. Did I say that right? Boy, it's been a long time. <laughs> 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 this your boy, Glass. Hello, I'm Brandon. <laughs> the best tag team dad out here in sports. Oh, we got our two set deposit on sports where we talk about actually, this is the NBA edition. We're just going to talk about NBA. We give our two cents, both of us give our two cents on the situation that on certain topics. Uh, you can follow us. You can follow the show live, so you can interact with us uh, with your Twitter account by going to blab i m b l a b dot i m and search for Get With It Sports. You can watch the show later at our YouTube channel, Get With It Sports Two, or listen to us while you're on the go by downloading the Spreaker app and search for Get With It Sports Media. Like I said before, we'll just be talking about NBA. We have been on here for a long time, so there's a lot to talk about. We're just going to cut it down just to NBA because it's the most relevant thing out here. So let's get to it. Let's get on with the recent news. It hits home here with our hometown uh, Chicago Bulls. Joe Kim Noah tells teammates he's leaving the Bulls. The 31-year-old has reportedly been telling teammates that he's done with the organization once free agency begins, citing no longer having trust that the front office can get the team heading in the right direction. From no unhappiness with the Bulls stems from his mistrust stems from the mistrust players have towards general manager Gar Foreman. It's reported Noah is leading the way for multiple players against the front office. In addition to the conflict with the front office, Noah uh, had also had has also had a spat with head coach Fred Hoiberg. After starting 323 of the 325 games for the Bulls over a five-year five year span, Hoiberg deployed Noah off the bench this season. He struggled in the role, averaging 4.3 points, 8.8 rebounds, before suffering a season-ending shoulder surgery in January. Despite the injury and limited use, which was only 29 games this season, uh, it was reported last month that the Bulls considered re-signing Noah a high priority. Really? Now Chicago is at risk of losing both Noah and Paul Gasol, who is expected to opt out of his $7.8 million play option. Selected in the ninth pick in 2007 draft, Noah has gone on to appear in 572 games for the Bulls, the ninth most in franchise history. Noah has been the backbone of Chicago's front line and vocal, vocal leader. In nine seasons, he's earned two all-star appearances at first-team All-NBA spot and was named Defensive Player of the Year for 2013-2014. Noah's agent, Billy, Bill Duffy, however, said the longtime Bull Center hasn't ruled out a return to the Windy City. To me, I didn't think he was when he was when, when we drafted him in 2007, I didn't expect what we got out of him. He got a heart of a lion. He got a warrior's heart. He plays like a warrior. Uh, like I say, shock, shockingly, pleasantly shockingly, uh, he showed us what he had. You know, of course, the last two years he's been going downhill, I think, because of injuries and he's getting older. Body don't heal like it used to be, but he still, I, I believe, deserve more playing time than what he got this season. So, I'm the type of person I, I love the team, not the player. I believe Noah's in his last leg. I went back, but definitely a hometown discount. If I ain't get a hometown discount, have, have no love loss. I mean, I ain't gonna say love loss. That's where wrong word I'm looking for. I I like me some Joakim Noah, and I will I would be happy to for him to go to any other team he want to go to because I understand because I'm not a Fred Hoiberg friend. I don't like the way they did Thibodeau. I don't like the way they brought in Hoiberg. I do agree with everybody. Gar Foreman messed this up. They might need to change the front office. That's just me. But uh, if Joe Kim Noah feel like he getting hoodwinked, <laughs> go ahead and do what you got to do. What you think, man? Uh, I agree with a couple things that you said as far as um, maybe changing the front office. Uh, my The Hoiberg thing is – I don't know. I'm, um, I'm on the fence with that. Okay. I think when – they hired Hoiberg, and Noah, Noah was a strong component of, you know, too much practice and, and all that stuff. You know, he started getting hurt, body breaking down or whatever. Great defensive player uh, when he's healthy. 
gave the Bulls absolutely nothing on the other end of the, of the floor. That was the problem. Now, you bring in Hoiberg, whose strategy is run up and down the court or whatever, you know, off maybe offense first. Mm-hmm. That kind of, you know, puts Noah on the, on the bench anyway. Right. Because – he has absolutely no offensive skills outside of tipping in a, a offensive rebound or something like that, you know, or a dunk on a break or whatever. So that kind of they kind of took him out of the whole Hoiberg Hoiberg scheme. That's why I guess Gasol may have been a prior sign. Him may have been a priority, you know, because he does have offensive skills. Mm-hmm. Um, if Noah left, which I think he probably will, I think he. If let me just say this because it's all in the media, or whatever. First of all, okay. If he said these things, I think he said it was just to you know save face or whatever. They want probably weren't gonna bring him back no way, not with this coach because he's, they don't need him for what they're trying to do. And I don't think Hoiberg got all the horses he need anyway to run the type of offense that he need to run. Okay. So you know that's that's what my my take is about Noah. Okay. All right, cool. Um, I, I agree with everything you said. I'm gonna give Fred Hoyberg a chance. This is first year, it didn't go well, as you can tell. I think this is the first time in nine years we haven't made the playoffs. Um, it seemed like there's a I ain't gonna say a mutiny, but Jimmy Jimmy Butler's trust his his mistrust in the head coach. Um, he used to the Tom Thibodeau way all defense, little offense. Uh, now we ain't playing any defense, little offense. Um, right. Uh, but I think I, I've always said I give a coach three years to to implement their their way of coaching. Mm-hmm. I know I said three, but I'm giving one more year. It's gonna be two. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna cut it down. I'm gonna cut it down one year. But I'm gonna give Hoiberg this year coming up to do to show me something different. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not impressed with what I seen last season. No, that last year was horrible. <laughs> my case stressed the word horrible <laughs> enough. Right? What? You know, and uh, there was a lot of people on that, you know, run Thibodeau train, uh, you know, out of town train, you know, a lot of people was doing it. Right. You know, so they pretty much got what they, you know, what they wanted, but not, you know, what they wanted. And let me ask you this. All right. You got Thibodeau in Minnesota. He's running everything. Mm-hmm. Coach, GM, whatever. He got a team full of youngsters. Mm-hmm. You know, got some draft picks or whatever. Jimmy Butler just signed a max deal with the Bulls. I'm not sure if Jimmy Butler max player, but he got the max deal. Yeah, okay. I said it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good player. Max player, I don't know. The max players are still playing. No, I'm just saying. They they out there balling right now. Okay, now, with that being said, if Thibodeau come calling to the Bulls with his young players, you listen to him if you want to see what's what's going on with uh, Jimmy Butler? Hmm. Uh, I would. I would. I would listen to him. It matters what I get back for him. Like I said, we pay we paying them max money. I won't I won't I'm gonna use that as my leverage. I won't I won't the max for my max player. If that means Wiggins in that deal, Carl Anthony Towns in that deal, who else is over there? I don't want Rubio. Uh a, some draft picks. I think they got some draft picks. I, I would, they- but I don't know if Thibodeau, I know, I know uh his his, his distaste for the bulls, <laughs> you know, man. <laughs> I know he wants uh, Butler, and Butler will fit well on that team. But you got to give up to get something. I don't know if he's willing to give up whatever he what he got over there. What he got over there, and we'll talk about it later. What he got over there is what 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 he actually wants. Right. So does he want to, to mess that, that young nucleus up? I don't know. Probably not. You know they're gonna be they're gonna be tough because they know mm-hmm. they know what he can do. Right. Know what he can do. All he got to do is listen. Yeah, you know what he can do. Right. You know. So, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting. Okay. You know? So you don't mind letting go, Joakim Noah, if you want to go. No. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Cool. All right, let's move on to the next one. We got uh the Washington Wizards, Bradley Beal, believing that he is a max deal player. Uh, he emerged as one of the NBA's most dynamic shooting guards during his first four seasons with the Washington Wizards. But as too often the case, his encore talent is overshadowed by his inability to stay healthy. That puts the 22-year-old and the team in a dilemma. He is set to become a restricted free agent this summer. The question becomes, is he deserving of a max contract? Bill, who has played in around 75% of the game since being selected third overall pick from the University of Florida, certainly seems to think so. He, as I qu as quoted, I wanted to be a value. I wanted to be valued right away. Bill told the Washington Post, "I feel like I'm a max player, and that that's what I'm looking for. If Washington can't meet the requirement, then I may be thinking elsewhere. I'm pretty sure that they probably won't won't let me go. I'm sorry. And at the end of the day, Washington is where I want to be. I can deal. I can. I think a deal will probably get done, but you just never know. Now." question is bradley bill a max player i'm gonna go ahead and answer this now hell no nah. i nah. like it. i like his game no nah. but you max player that so that means you tell me you think you're just as equal as john wall you're not yeah, we got the, he's the only max player on there. <laughs> exactly you're not a john wall man you, you haven't a max player you got to give me the max maximum of uh, playing time on the court. Exactly. 75% is not enough. Every time I see you, you sitting on the bench. And John Wall came to the team by himself. You a 75% player. You're not a max player. <laughs> okay, you should get 75% of that max deal. I totally right. agree. I was right about that. Yeah, I totally agree. So, but I've heard last the latest news I've heard today, they willing to give them that max money. So I ain't mad at you. Go ahead, go ahead and, and, and do your uh do your uh, uh what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh what's it? Put I uh, put it out there that you want max money. Somebody gonna give it to him. And that's the same, that's a shame about it, especially with all this money about to come out uh in the NBA in the next couple of years. So yeah, go ahead and get your money. But I wouldn't have paid him all that money. He could have actually, he could have, I would have put a, a, a bow on him, tell him where, wherever you want to go. I I'll see if I could. Uh, he a restricted free agent, so I'll see if I could send you where you want to go and get something for you. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. So you wouldn't get max money, right? No. All right, cool. Let's keep it moving. Uh, the 76ers is the first M is the first NBA team to land a jersey sponsorship with StubHub. The Philadelphia 76ers has become the first team in the NBA to put a sponsored logo on player uniforms, striking a deal with StubHub for a spot. On one of the hottest pieces of real estate available in sports. I don't know if you're the hottest piece, but anyway, StubHub, <laughs> a website that connects ticket buyers and sellers, will have a logo appear on the front of the left in the front left of the jerseys in 2017-2018 for the start of the three-year trial period. The patches mm. will be will appear opposite Nike logo and measured about two and a half by two and a half inches. StubHub jersey patch will be included in all the jerseys sold in Sixers home games. StubHub will appear in white lettering inside of a blue triangle for home jerseys, blue lettering inside of a white triangle for road jerseys, and red lettering inside a white triangle for the alternate jerseys. Uh, logos appear on international and MLS soccer jerseys, and many athletes in individual sports wear their sponsorship attire, where their sponsors attire in competition. NBA announced the deal last month and expected to move. Expected the move could generate at least hundred million dollars annually. Uh, the NBA comes becomes the first of the four major sports leagues to allow the corporate sponsorship patch, a step that the NFL, Major League Baseball, and NHL have yet to take. So, from what I understand, StubHub got a three-year deal, fifteen million dollars a year to have them stitch that patch on the jerseys. I do number one. Let me ask you: Do you have a problem with sponsorship patches on NBA uniforms? Yes, you do. Mm, I'm shocked. Okay, why? 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 Because after a while, they're gonna be looking like race car <laughs> uh, freaking jerseys. <laughs> every okay. every corporation gonna want their logo. 
on the jersey and gonna be willing to pay out of the butthole, you know, to have it stitched somewhere on there. And it's gotta be stitched somewhere on there where it can be seen by the cameras. You know, it's not gonna be next to the NBA sign or none. It's mm -hmm. gotta be stood out somewhere, either on the, you know, the shoulder or, you know, the whole back end of the jersey gonna be blue and the front side gonna be your team colors. You know, it's, I don't know. It, it's opening up a can of, Mm. Uh, stuff for me uh okay. because of the simple fact money money rules everything so right. if i give you enough money you're gonna put my logo on that jersey right right okay i don't have a problem with it number one because the patch is small enough where it's not gonna overtake the jersey for now that's what it looks like i don't know how many patches each team can have on their jerseys right now i think i don't know if it's only one per team mm -hmm. To whatever you, you got 30 teams so you got enough teams out there if you want to actually want to put a logo on there uh i have no problem with it you know more money cool you know what i'm saying how much I, more money do they need how much more <laughs> money do they need it's all about the money bro it's all about the money that's what i'm saying i know but i have but i don't have a problem with the long as the patch are small uh huh. I want you, like you said, I want you looking like a race car driver. Right. Sooner or later, they, and they already have patches on practice jerseys. You know. Right. Okay. Well, sooner or later, now you got to put a limit on. Okay. Each, each team can only have three logos. You know. Now your contract can only go as three years mm -hmm. long mm -hmm. you know, to have a patch on the jersey, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then maybe you know. Okay. But, I had no problem with it. I seen it on the Philly jerseys. I think it was about two weeks ago when I seen them on the Philly jerseys. They they look all right. They they real small and it's, they don't overtake the jerseys. That's I guess that's my whole thing. As long as you don't overtake the jersey, I have no problem with it. Yeah, I see big problems. Though. I don't know. It's like, <laughs> like the name and rights of the stadium now, you know. Yeah. What city? United Center. You know. Uh, Bank of America, you know, uh, you know it's yeah, Chesapeake. I think what's what's Oklahoma, uh, City Thunders, Chesapeake Bank, yeah, arena or something like that. Yeah, everybody got a name on their arena. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but hey, money talks, man. If you give me, if, if I give you enough money, you do what I want you to do, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I tattoo your whole name <laughs> off my back. Yeah. All right, man. We're gonna move on. You talking <laughs> crazy now. All right. Speaking of money in NBA, the salary cap projected in to be $92 million for 2016 2017 season. Great news for prospective free agents. The salary cap has is slated to jump even higher than previously anticipated, with the league awaiting a $24 billion national broadcast deal. Day that's slated to kick. Uh, kick in next season projections for the 2016-17 season and beyond are even grander than past estimated of 89 million dollars usa today obtained a league-wide memo that projected the salary cap to rise from 70 million dollars this season to 92 million dollars next year with a corresponding luxury tax threshold of 111 million dollars future estimates estimates could see the salary cap double from today's figure within five years so they got it estimated next year is 92 million the following year is 127 million the following year is 126 million i don't know why it went down but uh so in 2019-20 it'd be 129 million and 2020 2021 be 136 million so they are not they better not ever 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 say they hurt them for some money Remember when the last, I think the last uh, contract before, I think they was going, they was talking about going on strike and they were talking about the teams talking about they don't have any money. Right. They can't say this now. They can't say this now because of the, the TV deal and they can't say about these patches. You got money, man. So I'm pray. Hey, I'm happy for the players. They're going to have, uh, especially Kevin Durant. He's looking for a big payday. He's going to get it. And all these free agents, free agencies coming down the pike in the next two, three years. They about to get paid, man. Yeah. You know. So, all right, man. So let's go ahead and move on to the to to the the cream of what we got to talk about here. We're going to talk about the uh rookie of the year. It went to Minnesota Timberwolf Center, Carl Anthony Towns. Uh, he was the winner last I think it was last week, becoming the fifth unanimous winner since 1984. 
The first overall pick by the Timberwolves in the 2015 draft, Towns led all rookies with 18.3 points, 10.5 rebounds per game. He was named the Western Conference Rookie of the Month in each month this season. Started all 82 games, which is a great plus right there. Yeah. You got a rookie playing 82 games, that's great. Uh, and finished second team scoring second in team scoring behind Andrew Wiggins, uh Christos Porzingis of the New York Knicks, and Nikolai Jokic of the Denver Nuggets finished second and third in voting, respectively. So the one, one, two, three, four, five. So you had Carl Anthony Towns, the first place he took all the votes, 130 votes. Then you had Christoph Pazingas, who started off real good, but I think he got injured and he started declining as the as the season went on. Mm -hmm. Uh like I said, Nikolai Bjokic from Denver, De uh Devin Booker from Phoenix, and Jaleel Okafor from Philadelphia uh yeah. took up the rear. <clears throat> Towns and Wiggins are the first back-to-back -back winners from the same franchise since Bob McAdoo and Ernie DeGregorio of the Buffalo Braves in 1973-1974. So congrats to um, Carl Anthony Towns. To me, actually, for real, he is refreshing because he is a true center. He don't try to shoot you know, three-pointers. He, he always trying to work in the paint. He get all the rebounds, take all the shots in the paint. I think he could take three pointers, but I like, every time I seen him, he's he, if he got the ball at the three point line, he's always driving to the paint to score. So he to me, it's refreshing to see a true center be a true center. And it's, so, congrats to Carl Anthony Towns. Uh, any thoughts from you? Yeah, he because you, you can count on one hand how many guys that play center position and actually play with their back to the basket yeah, now exactly. in the NBA. So if he got that going for him, then how long will he be that way? You know, I, I don't know, especially if he does have a three-pointer, you know. Uh, that will make him tougher to guard, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, he did he did a great job. And I, get, I seen the notes where it say he's the first back-to-back -back player to do it. Uh, for the same franchise, mm -hmm. who did uh, Wiggins? Yeah, who did it too. Yeah, so yeah, see they they got some they got some going on over there. I'm telling you, they gonna be a <laughs> they gonna be a monster next season. Yeah, they totally, gonna be tough. totally agree. Okay, so the rest of the 2016 NBA award wins, you got the Defensive Player of the Year, which went to Kawhi Leonard of the San Antonio Spurs, Six Man of the Year, Jamal Crawford of the Los Angeles Clippers, Most Improved Player, C.J. McCullen. Of the Portland Trailblazers, the J. Walter Kennedy Citizen Citizenship Award went to Wayne Ellington of the Brooklyn Nets. Sportsmanship Award went to Mike Conley of the Memphis Grizzlies. Coach of the Year, Steve Kerr of the Golden State Warriors. Executive of the Year, R.C. Buford of the San Antonio Spurs. And the Most Valuable Player, which was the first unanimous uh, MVP winner, went to Steph Curry of the Golden State Warriors. Now, there's a couple of here I want to talk about. Okay. I'm going to start off with the coach of the year. I do not believe Steve Kerr des deserved coach of the year. The man only coached half a year. That should eliminate you right then and there. I understand they broke the, the 73 win record. I mean, well, broke the record with 73 wins. But you only coached half a year. If anything, I, if I was Luke Longley, I'd tell Steve Kerr, we got to find a mason that does great stone stonework or metal work and cut this trophy in half. I got to take half of this because I deserve it. That's just me. To me, the coach of the year should have went to, I think his name is Terry Stotts, the head coach of the Portland Trailblazers, because they lost four starters from last year and still made it to the second round the NBA playoffs. And I think I can't remember where they were in the season stat wise. Uh, fifth round. They was fifth. So I believe he was the one that should have won coach of the year. What you think? Uh, yeah, I don't agree with Kirk. He shouldn't have got it. Either. He didn't like to say he only coached half of the games. If that, um, the Portland coach, yeah, that, that would have been, my pick too, just because, like you said, they had so many injuries or whatever, and they they stayed competitive and they actually made it to the second round of the playoffs. So that would have been my my pick also, but definitely not not Curry. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> okay, 
Uh, I think another, what's the other problem I had? Uh, okay. It wasn't a problem, but I don't understand why pe- people have issues with Stephen Curry being the unanimous decision, decision as MVP. I understand he was the first one. Don't get me wrong. People have a problem because he was the first unanimous decision. That wasn't his fault. Do I think he deserved right. it? Yeah, I think he deserved it. I think Shaquille O'Neal deserved to be the unanimous, uh, unanimous MVP award win in 2000, but somebody voted for uh, Allen Iverson. Okay, cool. Then I believe that LeBron James should have been unanimous, uh, unanimous MVP right. candidate in 2013. But to, I don't know what the hell was wrong with this, this voter. He voted for uh, Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo, yeah. Ain't no damn way Carmelo Anthony is no way. That one time in his career, he was MVP, MVP material. But it is what it is. So now that we got one unanimous decision, because everybody likes Stephen Curry, everybody up in arms saying that he didn't deserve unanimous decision. I believe he did. It wasn't his fault that he was the first. But it is what it is. What you think? On the unanimous decision? Yeah. Or just overall? Well, okay. Do you even think he just? Let me ask you. Do you think he even deserved MVP? This this is my take on the MVP. Uh oh. Okay. Okay. And I am a Steph Curry fan, and he got it. Yeah, he evidently he deserved. It. But this is my take on the MVP. It says most valuable player. My definition of that meaning that mm. if you're not on my, if this player missed any significant time or is out for the season, we can't win. That's that's my whole take on the MVP. Without this guy, we cannot win. Now let me ask you this: If Steph Curry missed sixty games out of the eighty-two, does the Golden State Warriors make the playoffs? Yes, exactly. They won't win seventy-three games, mm-hmm. but yes, they make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's that's my whole thing. If uh, who else? Let's let's just say um, LeBron. Great. If LeBron, if LeBron missed 60 games, does Cleveland make the playoffs? They will make the playoffs, but they'd be seventh or eighth. Exactly. Right. You know? So that's that's my whole thing with the MVP. I got you. You know, well, you know, they obviously they have a different definition for it, you know. So but yeah, if, if they're going by their definition, yeah, he's more than deserving. I totally agree with you. Yeah, I meant to bring that up, but I'm glad you brought it up. MB- I'll, uh, the MVP, the definition of MVP is kind of vague. They need to clean it up. Yeah. Because right now, if you say MVP, and I totally agree with you. He is not the MVP. He's not the most valuable player. Now, if you want to say he's the player of the year, yes, he is the player of the year. Yeah. Is he the most entertaining player of the year? Yes, he's the most entertaining player of the year. But right. I agree with you. If, if I take you off this team, is your team going to fail? Right. They're not. If I take if if you want if you want to go by the true definition of the MVP, then LeBron should be winning it every year. Because when he left the Cleveland Cavaliers and went to the Miami, to Miami Heat, Cavaliers was trash. When he left the Miami Heat and went to the Cavaliers, I'm not saying the Cav the Heat wasn't trash, but they struggled. With, they didn't do too bad this year, which is the first year, right? right. Uh, but they finished that. Say, you, you can even say what the season Wade had this year, and Wade mm-hmm. not on the team. Mm. They Good don't point. playoffs. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's, it's whatever definition you want. Do right. you want to say player of the year? Yes, Stephen Curry. Most entertaining player? Yes, Stephen Curry. But most valuable player? No, nah, I can't give it to him. And it should be two different awards. Yeah, I think. I uh, either two different awards or change the MVP to player of the year. Player of the year, right? I totally agree. All right, cool. All right, so uh, what else we got here? Uh, another the NBA all defensive team. You got Kawhi Leonard, Draymond Green, uh, Avery Bradley, DeAndre Jordan, Chris Paul. I have no problem with that first team. All I mean, all defensive team rather, no problem at all. You, Leonard Green. Bradley, Paul, Jordan. Mm. No, <laughs> no I don't. don't. I okay. Don't. Okay. The second all defensive team was Whiteside, uh, Hassan Whiteside from the Heat, 
Um, uh, who else was on there? Tony Allen from the Grizzlies, Paul Millsap from the Hawks, Jimmy Butler from the Bulls, Paul George from the Pacers. I have no problem with that list either. Right. Now, I heard, now I know there's another uh, – what is it? The All-NBA team? And I'm about to pull it up right now. And I had a problem because I think Kyle Lowry was on that list. Kyle Lowry does not deserve to be on that list. <laughs> Oh. And I'm tr- I'm trying to find it real quick right now. I don't know if I can find it. Uh, I do believe. Let me see. They don't happen on. I can't find it right now. We're just going to keep moving on. But I do believe Kyle Lowry was on that list. You don't think he should be on that? No, oh, heck no. So, uh, now I can't find it. So, we're just going to move on. All right. What we got next? We have, uh, oh. Uh, now we're talking about the coaching carousel that actually ended today. I think all there was 12 vacancies, and I think all 12 vacancies got filled up. Recent, uh, the most recent ones we got the Indiana Pacers promoting uh, Frank Vogel's assistant coach Nate McMillan to the head coach of the Indiana Pacers. A little over two weeks after parting ways with Frank Vogel, the Indiana, Indiana Pacers announced. They've named Nate McMillan as the head coach. McMillan deal is reported for three years and doesn't include any options. 51-year-old served as assistant uh, coach under Frank Vogel for the past three seasons and takes over after the Pacers opted not to, sign, not to re-sign Vogel to a new contract despite leading the team to the playoffs five times in six years. Mm. Former, the former player, McMillan, has been assistant coach for the Pacers since 2013. And previous to that, he was head coach to the Portland Trailblazers for six plus seasons from 2015 to 2012. And with the then Seattle Supersonics from 2000 to 2005. With the Blazers, McMillan got the team into the playoffs three out of the seven seasons. He was uh, three out of the seven seasons he was there. And in Seattle, the Supersonics were in the postseason two out of the five seasons he was there and made a second round, made a second round appearance. His only playoff series win. Uh, McMillan has a point 50, uh, 51% winning percentage as a head coach with a record of 478 to 452. I didn't like the way Larry Bird got rid of Frank Vogel, but I do like the Nate McMillan signing. Mm-hmm. Um, and the only reason I'm cool with this because Frank Vogel got picked up by the Orlando Magic, which I think is a great pickup. But we'll talk about that in just a second. What you think about Nick McMillan being on the Pacers? I like I like Nate. You know, I like him as a player. And I don't know about a coach, <laughs> but I don't think that's a bad pick. You know, if right. you go by, you know, what's out there or whatever. Uh, former players been innovative in their styles or whatever, so. You know, I still like the former players. Okay, you got Tyrone Lue in Cleveland. I still don't know him being a former player, what exactly what impact he's having on that series. You know, I don't know if, you know, I see how they got rid of the other coach or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, As far as, you know, as far as former players, they do have insight to the game, you know, especially if they've been on the bench or whatever. They know what player is doing this, what player is not doing that, what player I will get rid of, what player I will keep, you Mm -hmm. know, uh, who's going to play, who's not going to play. Yeah, I think Nate McMillan, especially uh, with the Pacers, I think that was was a good pick, you know, Mm -hmm. good pick for them. I like the Pacers team. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, I do understand what Larry Bird was saying, that the offense was kind of shoddy, but – you didn't give them the players to me in order to look for the offense that you're talking about. Right. You know, nothing against uh, Paul George. Who else? I can't remember what the guard name is right now. Um, but if you want them, if you want a high octane offense, you got to get the players to give to, to, to work the high oct- octane office, o- octane office. Right. But uh, it is what it is. So um, let's talk about the, like I said, there was 12 openings. There's 12 closings as of today. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets had opening. They closed it with Kenny Atkins from the Atlanta Hawks. Don't know too much about him. Cleveland Cavaliers got rid of Black, moved up Tyron Lue. So far, so good. As you can tell, he's in a 
uh, conference finals. Right. Um, Indiana Pacers got rid of Frank Vogel. They got in Nate, Mc, Nate McMillan. The New York Knicks. Lord, the New York Knicks. They got rid of right. five Derek Fisher. They got Kurt Rambis. Now, see, it's stop right there. <laughs> I think that was a total lateral movement. I don't mm-hmm. think that no better, you know, as far as coaching. He just, mm-hmm. you know, I seen his act in L.A., you know, and he may have had better players in L.A. I seen his act in Minnesota, 32 and 132. Yeah, too, yeah. Did he coach in L.A.? Yeah, he coached in L.A. for right. a quick second. Right, yeah, I forget Minnesota, too, yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, so, you know, I don't know. Uh, I don't know about that. I think that was a lateral movement. I don't know what, you know, um, Bill Jackson doing. He may be, you know, he may be like like Jordan to me. You know, Jordan, the greatest player of all time, not a great owner mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. far. Bill Jackson may be a great coach, not a good GM. Right. <laughs> right. So, so go. Hey. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, uh, continue, continue. <laughs> okay, the Orlando Magic got rid of well, okay. Since we're on Scott Skiles, Scott Skiles better not ever, ever, ever get another head coaching job in the NBA. This man don't get fired. He quit before he gets fired. He quits too much for me. Yeah. He quit, he quit, he quit on the Bulls. He quit on the Bucks. Now he quit on Orlando Magic. Dude, he why they keep hiring him? Exactly. And what he, I didn't like the way he, he did. Look, I ain't never looking at you to uh coach my team. Exactly. Hey, I, I don't like the way he did Orlando Magic because he quit right after uh, uh, Thibodeau got the job in, in uh, Minnesota and Scott Brooks got a job in Washington. Now you're going to quit. At least give us a chance to get, get these top top line coaches before they all taken up. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Give me a chance to get <laughs> Thibodeau over here or whatever. Right. And I think he was a big, even though he is a is a great fit in Minnesota. I think he's been a good fit in Orlando too, with that young with the young core that they have over there. Yeah, that's just me. But they didn't go wrong by picking up Frank Vogel. I think that was a great pickup. Uh, Washington Wizards got rid of Randy Whitman, picked up Scott Brooks, good pickup. Houston Rockets, oh lord, this team here, they got rid of Kevin McHale and 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 Bickerstaff and picked up Mike D'Antoni today. I know, right? Mike D'Antoni don't know anything about defense, and you going on the team with with James Harden, who don't know how to play a lick of defense. That's I don't know, man. Perfect fit. <laughs> okay, uh, the Los Angeles Lakers got rid of Byron Scott, which I think they did him wrong, me personally, and they picked up Luke Walton. Now, this is what I got to say about Luke Walton. Luke Walton should have waited a year. I tell another job opening came up. I don't think I know he played with the Lakers, but until they get rid of Jim uh, Jim Buss from front office, that team is not going anywhere. That's just me, mm-hmm. you know. So uh, you got the Memphis Grizzlies got rid of da- uh, Dave Yeager. They got David Fitzdale from the Miami Heat. Seemed like a pretty good pick. Uh, Minnesota Timberwolves got rid of Sam Mitchell. Pick up Tom Thibodeau. The n- the number one move this season uh, in the coaching carousel. Uh, Phoenix Suns got rid of Jeff Hornacek and picked up Earl Watson. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. I take that back. Let me take that back. Jeff Hornacek is the one that got hired with by the yeah. Yeah. Knicks. That Kurt Rambis. I'm sorry about that. So it's Jeff Hornacek to the Knicks, which doesn't make too much of a difference anyway. You might win a little bit more games, but uh, the, the Knicks still suck. Uh, but Earl Watson took Jeff Horner's sixth spot in the, with the Phoenix Suns and the Sacramento Kings. And I like me some Sacramento Kings. But that front office don't know what they're doing. They shouldn't have picked up George Carl in the first place. But they fired George Carl and they picked up David Yeager, who just recently got fired by the uh, Memphis Grizzlies. So those are the 12 teams. I'm going to tell you my two teams, I think, did a uh, – three teams, I think, did a great job. Definitely the Minnesota Timberwolves. The Washington Wizards by picking up Scott Brooks and Orlando Magic that picked up Frank Vogel. Okay. Who's your top? Uh, definitely the Minnesota job. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah. 
I like Scott Brooks too. I like what he was doing and um OKC. Okay, OKC, okay, yeah. I don't, mm-hmm. you know, he might have been a fall guy for that. Them guys right. have been, you know, healthy over there. Mm-hmm. They're my picks. Uh I guess and yeah, the Pacers, you know, with uh, Nate McMillan. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. And I forgot to put this in the notes, but I'm gonna ask you this. The let me find it real quick. The draft. Let me see if I can find it real quick. All right. The draft lottery. Let me just go run the first, the top 10 from you. Mm-hmm. Philadelphia, number one. Right. Lakers, number two. Yeah. Boston, number three. Phoenix, number four. Minnesota, five. New Orleans, six. Denver, seven. Sacramento, eight. Toronto, nine. Milwaukee, 10. Now, the first two, the first three. Philadelphia, Lakers, Boston. Can I just go ahead and be the uh, cons- conspiracy theorist right now? <laughs> they needed them, t- at least them two teams going one or two. As you, all right, let me run this by you. I got two things run by you. I know we got we got time and we got like 20 minutes left. I'm going to run these two things by you. I believe they padded the balls, whatever, to make Philadelphia one, Lakers two. Or vice versa. It could have been Lakers one, Philadelphia two. But they need them two teams to go get Simmons and what's the other guy name? Ingram from Duke. Mm-hmm. Have you ever known a time that the top, the 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 uh, what's the uh, major market teams suck like they do now? We talking about the Philadelphia 76ers, Los Angeles Lakers, mm-hmm. New York Knicks, Chicago Bulls. I don't know if I'm leaving out anybody. Uh, I don't know if I'm leaving. But anyway, them just the four teams, and none of them make the playoffs. And now, now, with that being said, Charles Barkley said at the beginning of the week that the NBA has never been as bad as it is now. And I kind of agree with what he's saying. I get where he's going at. He's going by, you name me more than six teams that you would get season tickets for. And you can't. All right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And just like and let's let's just talk about who made it, who's in the in the conference finals now. The Golden State Warriors, Oklahoma City Thunder, Cleveland Cavaliers, Toronto Raptors, all small market teams. Hell, all small market was shoot, there was no major market team other than the Boston Celtics in the first round. In the first round. Yep, you got the, you had the Celtics. All right, yeah. All right, you had the Cavaliers in the East. You had the Cavaliers, Pistons, Hawks, Celtics, Heat, Hornets, Raptors, Pacers. Nope. In the West, you had the Warriors, Rockets, Clippers, Trailblazers, Thunder, Mavericks, Spurs. Okay, don't forget the Spurs. But they 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 are small market team. I don't see them major market. And the Grizzlies. No major markets. No New York, L.A., or Chicago in your top three. Now, let me just put it to you like this. Some people see – now, I hear Charles Barkley say I could kind of agree with it, but this is how I see it. You can see this as a glass half empty or glass half full. I see it as a glass half half full for the fact. I want, I want it to be spread out like it is. You know what I'm saying? OKC, got your, got your main players. Um who else we did? Um, Cleveland Cavaliers. Right. You got, you got them spread out. You know, you got your, all the small market teams got all star players. Right. And I think, and I'm cool with that because I'm, ha- I was hating that all the major market teams making it to the playoffs and all the, and all the small market teams are just fodder. You know what I'm saying? So I hear what he's saying, but I have to disagree. I like what I'm seeing because everything's spread out and it's more evenly matched. What'd you think? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That's that's the way it is in, in all the sports, though. You know, mm-hmm. and with this TV deal, it's gonna be it should be even better in the NBA. Now, that's the one that's the one thing that um, the TV deal is gonna bring. You know, it's gonna bring parity you mm-hmm. know, to, to the league or whatever. Um, but you know what? The crazy part is also with this TV deal, it could change just like that. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, yeah. He didn't leave OKC and decide he want to, you know, venture off into Chicago, New York, or whatever. 
you know, everything shifts, you know. Uh, who who's the next top guy after him? He he got to be the top three agent. Who uh, Durant? Yeah. Uh, I want to say Harrison Barnes might be the next one, and I would love to just see the Chicago Bulls pick him up. Harrison that's Barnes. Just, Harrison Barnes. Yeah. Yeah, that's a drop off from Durant. Though. <laughs> <laughs> true. 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 Well, he's I, still I, an excellent player. He's still an excellent player. You know. Right. So. Right. You know, but yeah, that it can shift. So yeah, I, I'm glad to see that. I like seeing that in, in the NBA. I l- love to see it in uh, Major League Baseball, mm-hmm. you know, who flourish off TV deals. And then, right. then uh, well, the NFL, which they that league has the uh, capability to turn it around instantly. You know, every season, you know, you can go from worst to first mm-hmm. in that league. You know, in no time. Right. So okay. yeah. All right, stay on this for another minute. Like I said, the draft, you got Bill Simmons. I don't think he's the number one pick. I think uh, Ingram from Duke is the number one pick. I'm not too fond with Bill Simmons. I don't think he's – everybody say he's NBA ready. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's NBA ready. I don't think anybody is that's NBA ready that's just a one and done. You're not NBA ready that quick. There's only a handful of people that could come out of high school, come out of the first year of college, and be NBA ready. And he's not one of them. But anyway, um, to me, if I was Boston with the number three pick, because after Bill Simmons, after the Ingram, it's going to be a big drop off. I will put a bow up on that one and, and send it up, see what I can get for that pick. Because they got, I think they got damn near um, three picks. See, I like what they was doing with, mm-hmm. the, with the picks, but this is the wrong year to have a whole lot of picks. You kind of get what I'm saying? From what I understand, I think that's not there. Yeah. Boston has three picks in the first round. Denver have three picks in the first round. Phoenix has, has three picks in the first round. And this is like, mm, this ain't the, the lot. This ain't the draft that you want to have multiple picks. So if I was Boston Celtics, who I think should have made the playoffs, oh, well, they did make the playoffs. I'm sorry. They made it. Who are up and coming, I would put a bow tie on that. I would even try to go get in a much uh, – I ain't going to say I'm a Dwight Howard supporter. I would go get Dwight Howard. That would be a monster team with you know, for Boston to get <laughs> Dwight Howard. Now, see, you know what? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me hear, man. Dwight Howard, he could have owned this league, man. He could have mm-hmm. doing. He could have been the ish in this league. Yes. Somehow he turned into a cancer. You know, he just bring he turned into he turned into a diva. Go ahead. I would say worse, but I'm I'm be politi- I'm be politically correct on this show. He turned into a diva. A di- a diva. How can you you grown ass man? You know. <laughs> right, I think that's just you know he just he took he took because Houston was thriving at one time they was on their way up they was pit they made it you know? to the conference finals last year. Come on, man, you don't <laughs> go from that to that. You know, not yeah. not with a player of that caliber yes. on your team. You not that's not supposed to happen, right? You know? And I, I would think that he would screw up the Boston Celtics unless, mm. unless his whole attitude would just be just refurbished. Okay. You know, I, so I don't, I don't know about that. You know. Okay. On there, you know. This one, I'm, this one, I'm gonna say about that. Good. In theory, it's good. You know, okay. I picked, I put two draft picks together to try to get him. You know, get him right. over there. He in a winning franchise. But again, he going to a big market. Whatever. And now you know that goes a diva in them again, you know. Oh, you know who? I, listen, I hear you. I, 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 I kind of agree with you to a certain point. I, I he a diva. He, he's. I'm, I'm close to calling him a cancer. But this is what I'm say about that. I think he learned his lesson when Charles Barkley gave him the, the intervention. <laughs> during the during the postseason, I can't remember what, what game it was when he kind of asked the question why people hate you and all that stuff. He was being sincere and, and you know he was being humble. I and what I seen, I think it was game three when the Houston 
when Houston was playing, was it the Warriors? Yeah, because the Warriors, because Houston won one game. There was a game where James Harden was just giving them alley oops the whole game. I'm like, that's the that's the Derek, that's the uh, Dwight Howard I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. So if I'm the next team that picks him up, I'm like, listen, if I if I pick you up, this is what I want. I'm gonna show him the clip <laughs> of that game where he was just thriving. He was getting all the rebounds, he's blocking shots, getting all the alley oops. And the reason why I said the Boston Celtics, I like mm-hmm. what the Boston Celtics are doing over there. And Brad Stevens is a great up and coming coach, and I think he would get the best out of Dwight Howard. That's the reason why I said the Boston Celtics. Like I said, they was ranked them. They was uh, number three in the. Was they number three in the standings? I'm sorry, number five in the standings, which is still good for a young team. They yeah. don't have too many. All just had one All Star, but I think they was missing Avery, who just made the defensive play defensive team. Avery. Uh, Brett, uh, Brett, well, I can't remember his name. Yeah. Avery, the guard. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, like I said, I think the head coach, Brad Stevens, will get the most out of Dwight Howard. That's the reason why I picked Boston Celtics. But we have to see how that fall, that comes out. Yeah. You think, would you pay him max money? No. He, he looked for max money. Well, I agree. I wouldn't no. pay him max money. You got to be a max player. You got to be a max player. <laughs> you got to be a max totally player. Agree. Totally, my, my potential says I should get max money. No, nah. right, right. Well, you've been in the league. You've been in the league too long to look right. for potential. Yeah, your potential gonna get me fired. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Okay. No. All right, man. We got a couple of minutes left. About ten minutes left. Let's get on with the NBA playoffs, man. We missed the second round. We halfway missed this round coming up the conference final, but we got to put our two cents in. Or what we think is how it's going to end up. Let's talk. Which, which one you want to talk about, the East or the West? All right. Oh, hello. Hi. <laughs> um, my, uh, I got to wait for my partner to come back. He just fell off on me. Here we go. Okay. I'm about to say, don't cut out on me, man. We got 10 more minutes left, bro. All right. I was about to say, who you want to start with, the East or the West? Uh, Okay, the East. All right, cool. We got the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Toronto Raptors. The way the Toronto Raptors sputtered in the first and second rounds, they went seven games in both of them. I thought they was going to get swept. Right. And at most, get the gentleman swept, get the gentleman's sweep as in just winning one game, they won two. Now they got bulldozed in Cleveland. They're going back to Toronto. What you think going to happen tonight? Uh, they ain't going to tell me how you think it's going to finish. Okay. I had said, I said Toronto will win one game. I gave them two. Mm. I knew they would win one. Okay. The last game kind of threw me because they didn't even get off the bus. <laughs> yeah, know, right. So I don't know what that was. I figured they lose the first game, you know, first time franchise in franchise history. They make it to the finals. They're going to be overwhelmed, you know, starstruck, all that. Mm-hmm. And after, you know, that it's time to play ball. Last game, like I said, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened there. I don't think they'll win another game. I think it'll be competitive uh for the next two games mm-hmm. but uh because what's it three two uh yeah you're right three, three two it's not it's not gonna be two games yeah it is tonight <laughs> I <laughs> yeah. totally agree, it, it, totally I, think, agree. I think it'll be a competitive game though mm-hmm. i don't think they just gonna they'll take another blow up like they did you know so you're right yeah, but you just go. You think it's going to end tonight in Game Six? I think, yeah, I think it's going to end tonight. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, I give kudos to the Toronto Raptors. Yeah, they 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 made it made it. I ain't gonna say right. exciting. Give they made it formidable. I, I would love to see it go an extra game. I man. definitely don't see yeah. them winning this series. But man, mm-hmm. they can send it to a Game Six, Game Seven. Yeah, game. Yeah, Game Seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, man, totally agree. Totally agree. Uh, now. So we both say it's going to end tonight, but if yeah. it goes seven, I, I'm cool with it. Let's go move to the West, where it's really exciting, man. 
All right. We even talked off air. We talked at the job. Right. I picked Golden State in five, maybe six. You went with OKC. Right. And I I do know you. I'm I knew you was an OKC fan. I knew you was a Spurs fan, but I knew you was an OKC fan. And I'm shocked. The reason why I didn't pick OKC because of what I seen at the end of the season. They could never finish out a game. I think there were like 12, 13 games they were losing in the fourth quarter. I'm like, okay, well, they're going up against Golden State, who just won 73 games, who has a <laughs> unanimous MVP on their team. They should be able to handle this. And I am impressed with OKC. Shouts out to Bill Billy Donovan, the head coach of OKC, because he changed the mentality and the culture of that team. Not saying they was doing bad with Scott Brooks. Don't get me right, wrong. Right. But Billy Donovan doing something to that team because he even got the bench playing. I never seen Steven Adams playing like he's playing. I never seen – I knew what they expect from Enos Cantor. And I knew what they expect from um, uh, Serge Ibaka. But he got them boys playing. Deion Waiters. Where, come on, man. Dude, Billy Donovan got to change the, 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 the mentality of that team. And it's refreshing to see. And when I, I I watched the game last night, and they lost uh they lost by what eleven I think it was I'm looking at the notes real quick yeah. they lost uh one eleven to one twenty to one eleven right nine points, but at the end of that game OKC was cool they wasn't arguing they they was getting each other hugs like you know we gave it a try we're gonna get we're gonna bust their ass when we go back home Saturday night I okay I'm gonna put it to you like this I pick Golden State. It looked like it could be OKC. And we talked about, I told you, all fair, Golden State got to win three games in a row against OKC. Yeah. That's hard to do. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, either it's going to be a shock to everybody that OKC wins, but if Golden State wins, if they get these three games in a row, it's an epic failure for the Oklahoma City Thunder. <laughs> I'm going to put it to you like that. So right now, I'm going to pick Golden State, they made a charge, but I cannot see them winning three games in a row. So I'm gonna go with OKC winning tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night, Saturday night, and it all. But if Golden State, if they go back to Golden State, do epic failure for the OKC. That's just my, that's just my thoughts. What you saying, man? Okay, this this is the thing about winning three games in a row. Mm-hmm. Can't look at it that way. Okay, yeah. one game at a time, right? Totally. I know it's an old cliche and whatever, but you can you can't win three games at one time. You can only win one game at a time. If you think mm-hmm. about game, if you think about game six and you playing game five, you know lost game five. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. This, Good this point. Is as simple as that. Billy okay. Donovan. The difference between him and Scott Brooks is he make adjustments very quickly. And he make mm. excellent adjustments. Mm, good point. That's that's point. one. The second thing is, if you look at OKC, they haven't Durant and Westbrook haven't been healthy at the same time in the playoffs for the last three years. You know, so okay. that's I think that's huge. You know, last time they was in the playoffs healthy together like that, they they would got to the finals. You know, so. Uh, the bench, they they always had a bench. You know, they didn't play like it, but they've always had a bench. You know, Cantor Adams, they've always been there. Baca, then he ain't went nowhere. They uh still lead the league in rebounding. Uh, you know, so the 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 structure was always there. You know, and I think the tipping point came against the Spurs when he implemented both of those guys. I mean, you ain't seen that since Duncan and Robinson. You know, right? Well, right. pretty much, you basically flipped the you know, old franchise move on them. You know, right? And uh, right? You know, it's worked, and to some degree, it's worked against the Golden State Warriors. Now, they was up three games to one. Mm-hmm. You got the whole one game at a time thing. I like Golden State. I like OKC. Mm-hmm. If if the OKC don't win it tonight. It's you know game set. No Saturday night. I mean Saturday night. Yeah, uh-huh. uh, it's it's going. You don't want to go to Golden State 
on no game right. seven. Although right. you've won twice in Golden State. Right. So, yeah, we know we can win in this building. We never won a game seven in this building. And everybody who played in game seven know it is totally different. Now, right. Golden State, I, I can't recall them playing a, a game seven with meaning, though. Last year they did against the Rockets. Yeah. They did one game last year. I can't remember offhand who it was. Was it? Yeah. Or was it the Clippers? Might, Might have been the Clippers. Remember which team it was. Okay, okay. I don't remember okay. who it was. But, you know, we already know Westbrook is the number one assassin out there still playing. I, I rate him above Curry, LeBron, Durant. You know, I. I put him above, you know, as far as the killer instinct. Got you. You yeah. know, as far as the killer instinct, you know. Right. Now, of course, you know, making that tough shot. Okay, yeah, you know, it's Curry all day. He got off, you know, he got off the bus range, you know. Mm -hmm. Where you start guarding him at? When he get off the bus, you know, you got to, hey, if he going, that just elevates everybody else, you know. So, it's I love this series. This is, the, this to me is the finals. And I told you, I said, either one of these teams can and will beat Cleveland. Okay. So, you know, I I think you and I had, you know, a uh, discussion about that. You didn't think OKC had a shot of beating Cleveland. I think they would destroy Cleveland, you know. Nah, let me not destroy. I say six. Okay. Either one of these teams, <laughs> I think either one of these teams will win in six games against Cleveland. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's my thing. Uh but yeah, uh, OKC. I'm going with OKC because they was up three games to one. I actually I picked them, I had picked right. them already. But if they go back to Golden State for game seven, all bets are off. Okay. Yeah. I got two things for we go off here. Okay. OKC, if they don't make it, epic fail. Uh I don't think so because they wasn't picked to win it in the first place. Okay. I'll take that. They play with house money then, right? There you go. All right, cool. My next thing, if the Golden State Warriors don't make it up out of here, is the 73 wins for not? Yeah. Is it is it, is it's hollow? It's hollow. Wow. It, okay. I, okay. I think so. That's like that's like the Patriots. This is what <laughs> Okay. This is what I'm gonna say about that. This is what I'm gonna say about that. They if if they win the finals, if they make it up out here and win the finals, they are gonna be considered one of the best teams in history. Oh, definitely, definitely. Okay, definitely. but if they don't win, I still think the seventy three. I mean, you can't take away the seventy three wins. You, you, can't, no. you know what I'm saying? Do I call it a hollow? I don't know if I call it hollow. They got the banner up in the same seventy three wins. You just you just not considered one of the best teams in the league in history in NBA history. No, they're gonna always be the best one of the best teams in NBA history because they won 73 games in one season. But all the but okay, when 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 the Lake okay, put let me just put it like that when the Lakers won 70 games, 70 games back in the 80s, uh -huh. they was, they, that was just that was the showtime era. They was the best, they, they had one of the best teams in history. Yeah. When the Bulls beat them, beat that record with 72, that team was considered one of the best. In NBA history, this team, if they don't bring home the championship, they can't be considered one of the best teams. You got to have, you got to finish it. Okay, I got exactly, exactly, exactly. 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 Yeah, because anybody that break records, they won, they won the finals. From what I understand, I don't know how far back we got to go, but that's why, that's how I see it. Right. You know. So. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. You got to finish. Um. Yeah. Exactly. And it's looking kind of shady. We're going to see Saturday night how it's going to turn out, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Let's go ahead and close shop. We want to thank everybody for tuning in. You know, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you're looking at it on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. We're going to have much. We're going to do this more often than we're doing now. But we're going to have some good stuff for you in the future. If you listen to us on Spreaker, go ahead and hit the follow button. Because anything that we do on Spreaker, which is either the two-cent deposit on sports, the short sports notes that I do, or me doing these uh, 
uh, stamp Mile High Stampede podcast. Look, I I forgot already. Nah. You you always get alerted on them shows. Um, follow us on Twitter. You can follow me at uh, uh, Get With It Sports. You can follow my partner here, Brandon at Le Four Twelve, and uh, check out the blog page Get With It Sports at WordPress dot com, Facebook at Get With It Sports. I think I think I just covered everything, man. So we appreciate you guys listening. This is Get With Sports, place where you do sports with a swag. I'm Glass. And I'm Brandon. The best tag team tandem out here in sports talk. And as always, be good, be safe, get with it. Peace.